We throw garbage into the bin every day. Sometimes we even watch how the garbage truck picks it up. But what happens after that? If you've ever wondered about that, pay attention. You'll get answers to some common questions about the municipal waste management system of the Barcelona metropolitan area. Also, we'll find out a little more about everything that has been done to treat the waste from the refuse container, the grey one. We'll take a look at the work of the San Adrià de Bezos Integrated Waste Recovery Plant. And we'll discuss how we can all contribute to reducing waste and better managing it. Because we also need to ask ourselves, what can we do before? It's picked up by the city government and managed by the Barcelona metropolitan area. All waste is treated in some form. Glass and paper are sent directly to the recycling companies and are used for making new objects. The remaining municipal waste gets taken to metropolitan treatment plants that recover the recyclable material, get energy from it and make compost from the organic matter. Anything that can't be used, residue, is taken to restore spoiled landscapes or gets dumped in a way that's safe for the environment. This municipal waste management system is set forth in the local regulations which have the following objectives. To prevent the generation of waste, to recycle 50%, to treat 100%, including waste from the grey container and proper management of residue. These objectives are in line with the guidelines of the Generalitat de Catalunya and the European Waste Framework Directive. There are more than 3,200,000 people living in the 36 municipalities of the Barcelona metropolitan area. Each one generates a bit more than one kilo of garbage per day. This means that each year around one and a half million tonnes has to be treated. That's a lot of waste. In addition, much of it can be recovered as raw materials to make new products or to generate energy. That way we avoid extracting more resources from nature. Because of all this, waste is managed according to the following hierarchy. First, prevent its generation. Then, recycling and composting. Next, waste to energy. And, as the last option, control disposal. Collection, for which each municipality is responsible, is paid for by municipal taxes. Treatment, which is carried out by the Barcelona metropolitan area, is mainly paid for by the TMTR, the Metropolitan Waste Treatment Tax. Manufacturers of packaging and other waste with industry-funded systems also contribute. The PIVR treats 31% of all municipal waste from the metropolitan area. Specifically, this means the refuse from Badalona, Barcelona, San Adrià de Bezos and Santa Coloma de Gramenet and other nearby towns when necessary. In other words, the waste that residents have not sorted and have thrown into the grey container. It also processes waste that cannot be recovered from its treatment and from other metropolitan plants. It extracts recyclable materials from the refuse and generates energy in two different ways burning biogas and burning waste that cannot be recovered. This plant is also one of the facilities that can be visited as part of the awareness and education activities of the Barcelona metropolitan area. In the refuse container, we should only throw waste that isn't meant to be collected with any other kind, like broken ceramics, cigarette butts or nappies. Unfortunately, we don't always do so, and all kinds of recyclable things and a lot of organic matter turn up in the container. This is the reason why we can extract these from the refuse. However, the process, known as mechanical biological treatment, is not easy at all. Let's take a look. To recover the waste from the grey container, 
First, we have to sort it. On one side, organic matter. On the other, sorted recyclable materials. What remains is the residue from this first treatment, which is the material that cannot be recovered. At some point in the process, workers hand sort the materials, but most of the work is done by different machines. For example, trommels, which sort by size. Ballistic sorters, which do it by weight and shape. Electromagnets, which attract iron. Eddy current separators, which repel aluminium. Optical separators, which detect colour and type of plastic. After sorting, the recyclable materials recovered are pressed and handed over to recycling companies. The sorted organic matter is prepared for an additional treatment. It is mixed with water and put into digesters for 20 days at a temperature of 37 to 39 degrees. During this time, bacteria develop which feed on the organic matter and produce biogas. Biogas is a mixture of methane and CO2, which is used as a fuel for three motor generators. When it's burned, electricity is generated. The organic matter that remains after this recovery process is taken to a composting plant to produce biostabilized material, suitable for making roadbeds or other civil works. Do you remember that after sorting the recyclable materials and the organic matter, there was non-recoverable material left over? Well, this residue from the mechanical biological treatment is what is burned in the waste to energy area. It is taken to a pit in this area by an underground conveyor belt. Once there, a worker puts it into one of three furnaces using a clamshell bucket crane. In the furnace, this material is burned at 850 degrees for approximately 20 minutes. The hot gases given off are used to heat water to 400 degrees in the boiler. The steam is fed through a turbine, the movement of which generates electricity. Then, the steam remains so hot that it is used by the centralised district heating and cooling system, District Lima. This system is a network of underground pipes carrying heat and cold to numerous buildings in the Poblenau and Forum districts of Barcelona. But it's not only steam that comes out of the furnace. There are also solid materials called bottom ash. It is sorted into scrap metal and gravel. Scrap metal is recycled and gravel can be used for road beds and other civil works. The gases produced during the waste to energy process could be harmful to health and to the environment. For this reason, the plant cleans the gases thoroughly, which prevents potential risks. Once in the furnace, urea is injected to neutralise the nitrogen oxides. On the outlet of the boiler, there is an electrofilter, which extracts the largest particles using magnetism. Then, it is sprayed with lime, which reacts with the acidic gases also, activated carbon is injected, which absorbs dioxins and metals. Finally, the gases pass through a sleeve filter, which retains the fine particles, lime and activated carbon. In order to ensure that this cleaning system is operating correctly, the plant takes constant measurement in the chimney. Emissions are well below legal limits. These gases are not the only impact that the integrated municipal waste recovery plant can have on the environment. In the mechanical biological treatment area, the odour is strong and unpleasant. To prevent this from getting out, this area is at a lower pressure than external pressure. The air is constantly sucked out and treated with a thermal oxidation system, which heats it to 870 degrees. 
This eliminates volatile organic compounds and other substances. The waste to energy pit also has an air capture system. In this case, odour is eliminated while the air is used to stoke the fire of the furnace. The mechanical biological treatment area also has its own purifier to treat any excess water. The whole plant has been designed to incorporate it well into the urban environment, that is, to minimise its visual impact. All of the facilities are very compact. The new buildings have come alive by way of a green covering. They have been clad in blue tones to blend with the sky and the sea in the background. This plant produces a large quantity of electricity, the equivalent of the energy consumption of 100,000 people in a year. Also, the use of this energy prevents the emission of 48,600 tonnes of CO2. On the other hand, the mechanical biological treatment is able to recover unsorted materials and send them for recycling. Therefore, after treatment at this plant, the volume of waste that has to be taken to a landfill is lower less than 7% of the total amount that enters. However, fly ash has to be taken to a special waste landfill. Now you've seen that sorting the different materials from the refuse with machines and by hand is not easy. This plant uses the best technology available. Even so, it's much more effective and economical if residents do this at home. Did you see the quantity of plastics and other recyclable materials that end up in the residue? Although generating energy using waste is useful and beneficial, it would be much better to recycle them. You probably remember that every year we generate 1,600,000 tonnes of waste. That's why it's so important to recover it and, of course, reduce it. If you want to make sure that the best use is made of your waste, sort it properly. Use the correct containers to dispose of it. Take waste that has no type of street collection to the special waste depots. Remember, however, that aside from sorting, Reducing the amount of waste we generate is essential. It's easy. Practice responsible consumption. Choose the products you buy, not just for the price or the quality, but also for the environment and social impact they have. Think about whether you really need items before you buy them. Even gifts can be a material. Avoid single-use products or products that break easily. Buy without packaging, with minimal packaging, or with easy to recycle packaging. Purchase recycled or recyclable products, and avoid those that contain harmful or hazardous substances. Did you know that products made of a single material are easier to recycle? Consume products that are local or made in countries with laws to protect the environment and workers. Don't forget to check how much energy and how many materials you will need to use devices. Reducing our waste and sorting it properly has consequences. You will make the work of the Municipal Waste Collection and Treatment Services easier, more efficient and less costly. You will prevent many materials from ending up in a landfill. Since you will be helping to recycle and generate energy, you will prevent new resources from having to be extracted, here and in other countries, some of them very far away. In summary, you will help to protect everyone's environment. You will reduce pollution and mitigate climate change by preventing the emission of greenhouse gases associated with the extraction of resources, the manufacturing of new materials, the generation of energy from fossil fuels and dumping in landfills. Now, which seems better to you? 